we're in the, the overarching topic of probability, right? Probability. Um, how likely is something to happen over another thing? What's the, what's the chance, okay? Now, we've looked at this before, and we keep coming back to this fundamental idea because simple as it is, it's full of very deep insights, right? When we say probability, we mean it's a, it's a fraction. It's a comparison between two quantities, something over something. The things are, on the numerator, favorable outcomes, you know, the ones that you're interested in, the ones that you want, divided by the sample space or all the total things that can happen. Sample space. Okay. Now, one of the things that we have discovered is that often part of the trick of the question is just being able to work out what these are, but they're complicated. But once you get that, like all you have to do is you know multiply the right things or simplify, easy enough. Okay. So one of the most common things that we get is that you know, for example, your sample space is um, I select ten socks in a row. That's a sample space, right? And the order of those socks, it matters because I want there to be pairs in there, right? So selecting things in a certain order is kind of half the problem of working out probabilities of different things, okay? And there's a whole bunch of important things just about ordered selections not to do with probability at all, okay? So what you'll find is, as we look at the, over the next couple of exercises, right? That the, um, the language of what is the chance, what is the probability will sort of recede into the background for a little while. It'll go sort of on the back burner. And instead you'll hear, you know, the, the phraseology of how many ways, right? So we're not working out fractions anymore. We're going to be working out numbers, big numbers, right? Like integers and all that kind of thing, okay? By the way, ordered selections, that's a bit of a mouthful. Mathematicians tried to make it a little better, but they didn't succeed very well. The other fancy name for this is permutations, okay? How many ways are there to select from a bunch of different things when you're interested in the order? And we call those permutations, okay? So you might recognize that word. Now, let's look at a simple example, okay? Um, how many permutations are there of, example, um, a four-digit pin? A four-digit pin. Right? Because, you know, if you've got a bank card or if you've got a phone that you care the security about, you're going to have a four-digit pin, right? Well, how many different ways, how many different permutations can you get of this thing? Okay? Well, let's think about it like this. Here is the spots where my four-digit pin is going to go. Okay? In fact, that's, that's what my screen even looks like. Turn it on, it's like, look, you're going to have to type in four characters. Okay? Now, you then think about what's going to go in each of these slots, right? Now, if I say four digit, like let's let's stick with numbers. You know, if you go to the um, if you go to the shops in the FPOS machine, it's just got numbers on it, really. How many options have I got to put into you know your your making a password into this first spot over here? Hmm. Now I count the options as zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So I have ten options, right? So I can put 10 different things in that spot. Cool. Now when I move it to, over to the next spot, right? So this is like a multi-stage event, if you like. I've got another 10 options. I don't have to worry about, you know, with or without replacement or anything. I'm just picking a number, that's all, okay? So I've got another 10 different options, and then another 10, and then another 10. Easy, right? So being that I have to pick all four and they all combine together, remember, it's a multi-stage event, but this is all happening simultaneously. It's one event. So what do I do with these numbers? Which rule do I use? This is the product rule, isn't it? Because all of these characters, uh, events happen at the same time to make my four-digit pin. So I multiply them, I get 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So there are 10 to the 4 different combinations. And you can see very easily how this could turn into a probability question, right? For instance, if I randomly pick up your phone and try and guess your password, what is the probability that I guess the right password? And the answer is, you know, one in 10,000. Not very good chances, right? But there you go. You can see how this question feeds into this question. Make sense? Okay. So if you want to catch it in the, um, the language that we've already been using, okay, this thing here, is with replacement. With replacement, because I have the same bunch of numbers and I keep on putting it back. Okay, so this is with replacement. 
okay? Now, I know it's a little bit contrived, but let's replay the scenario. I still want a four digit pin. Okay. But let's suppose, you know, I'm a bit of a, I, I know that repeated digits are actually a bad idea in a password, they are. So I say, look, I want to not have any repeated digits as I go through, okay? So when I have a look at this first one, I've got all 10 to pick from, yeah? I can still pick any of zero, one, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine. So far, so good. But then when I pick the next one, I don't want to pick from the same number. So if you like, this is without replacement, right? So how many options do I have left for the next number? Nine. It's a nine. And then once I pick two, well, there are eight left. And then for the last one, there will be seven left, yes? Just like before, all of these things are happening simultaneously. So again, I use the product rule, I multiply, right? Now, how can we write this? How can we write this? Obviously, I can write it as just 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, but we have language that would make this a little more concise, right? When you're multiplying and you're, you're decreasing by 1, the language that we use is factorial notation, right? So this clearly looks like 10 factorial. At least it starts that way. But it doesn't end that way, does it? And we looked at this under binomial, right? I'm missing, what am I missing off the end? I'm missing six factorial, right? So you don't, you don't subtract it though, you're dividing by six factorial, okay? Now, I'm gonna push on this a little further. Clearly that six factorial is not just some random, I just pick out six, right? Why is it six and not seven or three? Where does that six come from? It comes from the fact that um, I've used four of the options, right? So that's why there are six factorial left over here that I haven't included. Right? So it's 10 factorial on 10 minus 4 factorial. That's really where the numbers come from. And you can see it's built of the same numbers as this. Right? The 10, as in how many digits there were, and the 4, sorry, 10, how many different numbers you could choose from, and 4, how many digits were there were. That's how we built this number of permutations. Okay? So this is um, without replacement. Okay. So let's generalize a little bit. If I have, let's put it over here. Okay. If I have n objects, n objects, for instance, if I have 10 numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, okay, and I have k uh, positions to put them into, okay, if I have n objects and I want to put them into k positions, okay, then in this case, how many permutations are there? Well, it'll be n times n times n times n, however many times you have positions, right? k times. So that would be n to the power of k with replacement. Okay, obviously you could expand this out to say, you know, what if it wasn't numbers? What if we allowed letters in there as well? And then I guess you would have your 10 digits and your 26 letters, and you would say, well, it'd be 36 to the power of 4. Obviously, many more options, right? Okay, now when you come down to here, it's a little more complicated, but it's still the same numbers. It's still the same numbers. You're still going to have n factorial to start with, but you're not going to have n factorial by the end unless you're picking that many positions, right? I've got k positions. So this would be n minus k factorial, right? Now this comes up so much, and it's so awkward to put into your calculator repeatedly that your calculator has a special button for this. We say it's n p k, and it's right next to its um, important cousin, which you're familiar with, you're more familiar with, n c k. We'll come back to this guy in future times because I know you're familiar with him, but he comes up in this context a little differently. Okay. So I think it's um, shift. What what is it above? Is it above like plus or minus or something? Uh, times, times plus times. So you've got p for yeah, it's above, it's above times. Um, it's P for permutations, really. But just in, um, in, in normal language, you either say NPK um, or you say NPIC. PIC? K, right? Because I want to pick out K of them. I want to pick out four of them, right? And I've got N to choose from. Does that kind of make sense? And this scenario, like the four digit pin, it comes up again and again and again. You've got 20 horses in a race. How many different trifectas are there? 
20 horses in a race. 20 horses, right? Is this with or without replacement? It's a trifecta. It's trifecta is first, second, and third place, right? Clearly, that's without replacement because you can't get the same horse going first and second and third unless it's some kind of weird, weird quantum Schrodinger's horse or something. I don't know, anyway. So you've got 20 to choose from. It's without replacement, it's this scenario, right? So you're going to pick three. 20 pick three. By the way, what is 20 pick three? I assume it's a very large number. 6,840. Right? So if there's a 20 horse race and um, you're betting, right? And a trifecta is a thing that you bet on, right? If you don't know anything and you pick out a trifecta at random, right? Which, by the way, if you go, if people go to the TAB and they'll just press it like a random generator because, like, oh, who knows, right? Well, that means you've got a one in 6,840 chance of getting the trifecta. I think I'd rather go wash a car and ask for $10 if I want to earn money. But anyhow, each to his own. So does that make sense? You've got these two ways of approaching permutations based on whether you're replacing or not.